We thank God for you and your family, and we are grateful to have you on Gift Our Church platform. May God be good to you as you invest in the hearing of the word. Now, let's get into the word from Pastor Kwame. The scripture says, delight in the Lord, and he will grant you the desires of your heart. Amen. We are grateful to God for another day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And one of the things I believe is that the Lord who has called us, the songwriter says, faithful is he who has called us, and he will do it. Amen. We serve a living God. We have a Father who will never fail or disappoint us. I always want you to understand that the promises of God, they are yes and they are amen. And one of the things that makes my heart glad is the fact that he who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think is the one that we are in covenant with amen the covenant will speak and the blood will speak and the name has been given above all names and at the mention of the name jesus bible says every knee bow and every voice declares that he is lord to the glory of the father i greet you on this thursday in the invincible name of our lord jesus christ i'm always excited to bring you the word of the living god because as always i want to say that the flower our faiths they live with her but the word abide forever amen amen let me run on to my assignment today i am reading from the book of exodus i'm visiting the 10th commandment today exodus chapter 20 the division number 17 exodus 20 17 the scriptures now says now uh, never desire to take your neighbor's household away from him never desire to take your neighbor's wife his male or female slaves his ox his donkey or anything else that belong to your neighbor i believe you you are familiar with the verse that says that shall not covet your neighbor's house you covet your neighbor's housewife so the translation i use here is a little bit different but you understand the concept here let me take it again exodus chapter 20 the verse number 19 the bible says now never desire to take your neighbor's household away from him never desire to take your neighbor's wife his male or female slave, his ox, his donkey, or anything else that belong to your neighbor. Uh, for the next few minutes, I want to teach today. I, I want to teach today, if that's okay. I want to spend some time with you and talk about the three people that are mentioned in the tenth commandment. The three people that are mentioned in the tenth commandment, and and I want. Hopefully, you are hearing the word the 10th as in number 10 not the 10 commandments as we are familiar with i'm talking about commandment number 10 and the three people that are mentioned in commandment number 10 and it's so critical that you begin to understand these three people because our lives literally depend on it especially in this day and age Uh, all right so um as always, I would like to exegete the test and give you a little bit of background and context. So, if you take a closer look at the Ten Commandments, it's interesting that the beneficiary or, or the benefit, the person who benefits from the Ten Commandment, is is not mentioned. It, it just the Ten Commandment just protect an unknown person that shall not kill him, that shall not steal from him, and and so you notice that it is addressing everybody else except the person who is benefiting from the commandment. Now, let me begin to uh, uh, show you the first individual as it pertains to commandment number 10 and i want you to hear this because our lives is centered on this very truth that i'm going to share with you on today so the first person that this 10th commandment is addressing is you you the individual and 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 hear me and hear me clearly um your protection your the protection of your household the protection of the things that belongs to you it's not just god's will it's not god's desire but it's a law are you hearing me It's a law. It's a spiritual law for you to keep your wife. It's a spiritual law for you to keep your slaves. It's a spiritual law for you to keep everything that belongs to you. In other words, anything that leaves your hand is against the spiritual law. So God is not saying that your household, the protection of your household, is that something he wished for. No, God has made it a law. It's illegal for you to lose your wife. It's illegal for you to lose your slave. It's illegal for somebody to take that which belongs to you. It's, that is how serious God has moved forward to protect that which belongs to you. So the first person, the, the, the commandment is talking about, 
is you, which is you are the benefactor of this commandment. And God has made it a law. God has made it a law that it is against the law for you to lose your wife. It's against the law for you to lose your husband. It's against the law to lose your children. It's against the law to lose that which belongs to you, to another person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the first person this addresses is you. Uh, but, But that is really not what I want to talk to you about today. The third person is really who I want to talk about today. But I have to talk about the first two. And the first person, don't forget, is you. The, the, the commandment number 10 is a law that you can stand on to pray. It's a law you can stand on to declare that I will not lose my marriage. I will not lose my children. I will not lose my job. I will not lose my possession because it's decreed by God, by law, that nobody takes it. Whether, whatever spiritual being or physical being, nobody takes that which belongs to me. He says, never desire to take away from. So you being the benefactor, you being the one on the other side of the commandment, it is your legal, oh God help us, it is your legal right to possess everything in your house. So are you hearing me on today? So I believe you must understand it with that confidence, that's how you should pray. That God, you have commanded the protection of my household. Therefore, I pray. And one of the things that surprised me is that God expects you to have a wife. God expects you to have a husband. God expects you to have females. I mean, God expects, because this is a generic um, a protocol of a command that, 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 that covers. God expects you to have things in your home. And so he protects it with a command. And I want you to know that it's a command to have a peaceful home. It's a command for nobody to come and disturb you. It's a command for nobody to steal from you. And so I place you and your house under this command in Jesus' mighty name. Let me run on so that I don't stay too much on the first person. The second person, this this verse is talking about is everybody else on social media by the by the launching of social media the 10th commandment has been broken by everybody are you hearing me and and you will say pastor so is is it that bad but the second person the commandment is talking about is your neighbor it's your friends online it is everybody else who is exposing their lives publicly for you to have a sense that i like that for you to have a sense and and so we break the 10th commandment every time we turn on our phone because there's somebody who's posting something that is and and the problem is that we we are we sin against God with fake pictures. We sin against God with people's pictures that are not real. We sin against God with, I know how to, I know how to, you know I know how to. I can take the, the most not good looking person in the world and just give me about not even a minute give me about 48 seconds and i can make a miss world out of that person by editing it right and so we have loose look at at, you challenge mr pastor send me a picture of you crying and within two minutes i can send the same picture of you laughing so we can create this fake reality that people's marriages are better people's life are better and it causes us to break the tenth commandment where we covet people's marriages they fight at home and post a picture of them kissing and we covet these things which are not real and so the enemy has made social media one of the greatest way we break the 10th commandment every day so the second person this verse is talking about is everybody online everybody online do not covet their profile picture do not covet it's not real even if it's real it is not good that you convert it's not good that you 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 desire somebody else's anything i hope you are catching where i'm going because i'm not there yet but i'm developing it but point number two is that the commandment is talking about everybody online the commandment is talking about everybody online and 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 everybody on social media and, but i said again the launching of social media has caused everybody to break the 10th commandment on every blessed day do not covet your neighbor's wife because it's just photoshop do not covet your neighbor's anything because the truth is god knew that it's not everything that glitters is gold god knew that 
they look happy but she is miserable in the marriage god god knows that it's not everything you see that is true and the last person that i really want to talk about this is going to be short the last person that this commandment is talking about is god amen every woman on this line understands that if a man is with you and he looks at another woman passing by it weakens the trust in the marriage even though the man is physically with you god wants me to tell you as passionate as possible that anytime you look at somebody's life and you like it you are telling god you don't trust him anytime you look at somebody something and you like it you are telling god god i don't trust you it breaks the heart of god when you don't believe that he has better things in stock for you and if you look at the scripture the first relationship that god ever had with man was a relationship with the people called israel and one of the things that is always clear in the bible is the fact that when israel is drifting away from god they ask for things that they saw online the bible said they will come to moses and say give us a king like what we saw online give us a king like what we saw online i I don't know but i want you to know from today that god expects you to know that he has you in mind in such a way that nothing moves you i don't know i don't know i don't know how to i don't know how to get you to cross over but blessed is he who has crossed over to a point that nothing you see moves you and it's 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 very subtle because they call something subliminal message it's not you intentionally gauging and i mean gazing at whatever somebody is posting it's not you intentionally gazing but subliminally it it enters your heart and it becomes a desire you don't even know where you pick it from and i'm speaking to myself i'm speaking to everybody and god just woke me up to tell me that my people are breaking my heart by comparing their lives with other people they see and it is covetousness and it is destroying the trust that i share with my people child of god i want to uh, admonish you today i beseech you therefore by the mercy of god that you and god will be so close together that you only have eyes for what god is doing you only have eyes for what god is doing i pray that you will never desire what you see online i pray that you will never desire what you see with your eyes because eyes have not seen what god has prepared for you but god came through today to let me echo this word to your heart that it hurts god so much when because of what you saw online you don't trust god anymore it hurts god so much when because of somebody's picture you doubt his promise because of somebody's profile picture you look down on yourself God says that I want nobody to covet anybody because I'm doing something in your life that is not like somebody else. And what happens when you begin to covet somebody's, when you begin to covet, when you begin to um, desire, when you begin to let your heart and your mind go into somebody's plan so much, you throw what God is doing away and you pick up what man is doing. When you are moved by what you see online, you move off God's line. When you are controlled by what somebody posts online, the Holy Spirit cannot control you anymore. I'm praying for you that we will escape this trap of the enemy to convert something that is lesser than us. One day I was writing a song and and, and I wanted to just sound like a song that's already out there. And after I sang it a few times, I knew that if I don't write what is in my heart, I will miss what God wants me to tell the world. There is something that is within you. And God tells me to tell you today, don't let social media 
steal the spiritual media that is within you. Don't let what your eyes see control what you want. I pray you will escape this trap. Spirit of the Lord, we thank you on today. Father, help us to not look at the other woman passing by. That is why you said in the beginning, have no other God beside me. May God, may God cause you to focus on him alone. In Jesus' name, amen.